Welcome back everyone. My name is Dan Vega and today we're talking all about J-Hipster. J-Hipster is this great tool that allows you to scaffold out your Spring Boot and Angular applications. It can be a little tricky in development though to know what you're starting up and what files you can change without having to kind of shut everything down and restart it. So on the one hand you have this Java application which is a Spring MVC app and on the other end, you have an Angular application, and that has its own server as well. So in today's tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to work with jhipster in your development environment. And we'll do that right after this. So we are talking jhipster in development today, and what I'm going to do is just create a very simple jhipster application. We're going to jump into it and take a look at some of the things we might try and do when we're in development and then we'll take a look at a solution and what the actual documentation tells us uh, that we should do to go ahead and help us out in development mode. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to create a new directory. We're just going to call this notes. I'm going to cd into notes. I'm going to say jhipster and let's go ahead and create a new application here. As you can see I'm using 4.6.2 uh, we're just going to create a very basic app here. Um, uh, nope. Yep. SQL. SQL. H2. Yes. Maven. None of those. So we're using Angular 4 by default now, which is great. Uh, no initialization. No. Nope. And again, if you're kind of new to jhipster and jhipster4 in general, uh, we're using yarn now instead of npm. So this process, while it is a little long, uh, it's way shorter than it used to be um, just because of some of the power of yarn is going to help us out there. It's a lot faster. So we're going to basically create our app here. I'm going to open up in IntelliJ. And what we're going to do is take a look. We're going to fire it up. We're going to fire up the application and then take a look at making changes to some of the HTML files, CSS files, TypeScript, etc. And just so we understand what we're supposed to do in development and why right off the bat just changing those isn't going to change when we go ahead and launch our app. And you'll see more of what I mean when we go ahead and do this. So as soon as this is done, we will fire that up. All right, and we should be ready to go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually just fire up this application and take a look at the problem here. So. We're just launching this as a normal Spring Boot application. So again, if you're kind of new to jhipster, we have this source main directory. And again, we talked about uh, our jhipster applications being Spring Boot, uh, Java Spring on the, on the back end, and Angular on the front end. So we have a, a main Java folder, and this is really where the Spring Boot app comes into play. And then we have a web app folder, and this is where the Angular side of things come into play. So I just need to change this real quick. I'm not running Java 9 at the moment. Okay, so we can see here that our notes application started up on localhost 8080. So if we were to come over here and fire up this browser, we're going to have our default home page here, and this is kind of what comes out of the box in your jhipster application. And so let's say I was given a task to go ahead and change this text to something else. So this is your home page. We're just going to say uh, hello Dan Vega here instead. So we now know that this is kind of split up into a Spring Boot app, which is under Java, and an Angular app, which is under Web App. So our first inclination would be to come into App, uh, look for the home component come into the home component and there is our text. So let's just say, hello, Dan Vega. We'll go ahead and save that and come back over to the browser. 
and this hasn't changed. And in fact, even if we were to refresh this page, uh, which we shouldn't have to, remember we're working with a single page application now, this still hasn't changed. And part of the reason for this is because we're running our Spring Boot application. So if we were to turn on like DevTools, we know that we can make a change to say a controller class or a service class and that will automatically kick in that reload for us and we can go ahead and, and move about our, our day. But we haven't made, the, the, the view layer itself is in Angular. So once the Angular application gets built, uh, and, and again, using Webpack, it, it builds those um, bundles for us. Um, the Spring Boot application is using those bundles now. So making a change to this particular template is not going to help us. Um, but we know that we there is a way to do this. And let's go ahead and look at this. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh or take this back. And this was in app home home component. And I'm going to leave this running. So I want to leave uh, the Spring Boot application running. I'm just going to come over to my terminal here. And what I'm going to do is actually run a command here, yarn start. So remember, we're using yarn now. And we're just going to run this command start. And I'm going to talk through it as it starts to uh, start up for us. So what does this provide us? Uh, this actually gives us the ability to modify one of our HTML, CSS, or TypeScript files and have our browser automatically refresh. So if you've ever done just standalone Angular development, you're used to this. When you build a, um, or start or build a Angular app, you're kind of working in the browser, right? If you make a change to an HTML template, your browser's refreshed and that change is then shown to you. So this is going to give us the same ability. It's going to launch a Webpack tasks that will automatically um, compile any of our TypeScript code into JavaScript. Um, it's also going to have a Webpack hot module reload server um, that will proxy to our backend. And then it also gives us a browser sync task that runs on localhost 9000 um, that basically gives us the ability to synchronize users' clicks and scrolls and input. And also gives us a browser sync UI, but we're not going to worry about that at the second. What we do care about is what we see down here. So we have a 90, uh, localhost 9060. Um, that's really a proxy. So we can access this by hitting the URL localhost 9000 or external. And again, I told you before, there's a uh, localhost 3001 for the browser sync UI. So what I want to do is come up here. And again, we're uh, in our localhost 8080 right now. So if we go back to the um, IntelliJ, we can see that we can connect to it using localhost 9000. So let's go ahead and try that. Whoops. Uh, where'd we go? So localhost 9000. So now we should be looking at, you see the connected to browser sync, and we're looking at the same template here. But now if I come in here, and actually let me just kind of pull this down so you can see this. We're going to go, hello, Dan Vega. And I want to try and get this in the same view. If you see this terminal here, once I save this, it kind of kicks off. And this is going to refresh for us automatically and show us hello Dan Vega. So this is the this is the kind of workflow that we want to use when we're developing our J Hipster applications. We still want to start up Spring Boot, but we want to come over to the terminal here, run the command yarn start, and now we can work within our Angular application and make changes to things like HTML templates, CSS files, and TypeScript files. So I just kind of wanted to answer this question. I know it tricked me up at first. I know looking on um, 
some of the, the forums out there and people's questions on GitHub, uh, this definitely trips people up at first. So just wanted to point this out. That's the kind of workflow we're gonna take when we're working through development on our JHipster projects. I hope you enjoyed this. Please hit that thumbs up for me, subscribe, and, and let me know if you guys are facing any problems that uh, kind of like this. Uh, and with that, I'm going to leave you there, and I hope you all have a great day. Thanks.